Hi, I'm Dr. Suchitra. First, I would like to say that some basic knowledge of all rheumatological problems is important to any doctor. Whether you're a medical student or a super specialist, some basic knowledge of the common rheumatologic problems is useful not only for you to see patients, but when a family friend or uh, some friend asks you, I have this joint problem, do you think I should see an orthopedician or a rheumatologist? You would be in a position to better answer that question. So, let me start with some clinical scenarios which might be more useful to you. The first patient is a 60-year-old lady. She complains of pain in her left wrist. In this session, I'm going to concentrate only on history. I'm going to tell you how to try to arrive at a possible differential diagnosis using history alone. So, what questions can you ask? The first one would be, how long has she had the pain? This lady has had pain for about three days. Next, you ask the patient, how painful is it? And if the pain is constant or intermittent? This lady says the pain is very severe and she feels it's constant. And she does not have any time when there is no pain. Next, you ask the patient whether there are any aggravating or relieving factors. This lady tells you that uh, whenever she moves the left wrist, any small movement causes the pain to become a lot worse. And relieving factor, she says only some medications decrease it a bit. But even at rest, even if she doesn't move the wrist, there is pain. Does it disturb her sleep? This is a quite an important question to ask. She says yes. That tells you that the pain is quite severe. And when there is one joint involvement, make sure you ask the patient whether there is any other joint involvement. And when you think of joints, don't just stop with uh, upper limb and lower limb joints. Ask about the neck and back as well. This lady says she has uh, no other joint problems. And the last question could be, what can you not do because of this problem? This shows, uh, tells you if the patient is able to function with this problem or not. And that determines how you treat the patient. For example, if the patient has knee osteoarthritis and uh, the patient actually says, I'm not able to walk much. If the patient is somebody who is uh, housebound, who doesn't move about too much, then you wouldn't rush to jump in and suggest a knee replacement. But if the same patient wants to travel, um, visit uh, different places, then you would say for your requirement, maybe a knee replacement will be useful. So it does depend on what the patient says they cannot do because of this pain. This patient says she is unable to use her hands and there is no early morning stiffness in this patient. She does not have any diabetes, hypertension. And this is a set of questions I think uh, most doctors would ask, but I would say you should ask um, every patient these questions because sometimes they know, don't come forward with this information. There is uh, no history of hospitalization, no allergies, no acid peptic disease, no operations and there is no history of wheezing or asthma. Now from this history, what can be the diagnosis? Can we think of rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, although it is a little bit unlikely for it to be in only one joint. So rheumatoid arthritis is usually poly articular and symmetrical, but there is a monoarticular type. So it is a little bit unlikely though that this could be rheumatoid arthritis. You could think about it. And since she is 60, maybe you could think about osteoarthritis. There is one important point in the history that I have not told you. This lady had a fall. Okay, most patients will come and tell you that they had a fall and the pain started after that. But there are, there are some patients who may not remember if it was a mild fall and especially if they had pain in some other joint, they may ignore this mild pain in this joint at that time. And so they will not relate it, they may not relate it to the fall. Okay. Or uh, I had a patient once who had dementia, so she did not remember the fall. Then so they assumed the joint problem was something else when it turned out to be related to the fall. So now does this change your diagnosis? It should. This patient had Coley's fracture. Uh, I started off the rheumatology session with something that is, well, not technically, but nearly non-rheumatological because osteoporosis is, can be treated by, is treated by rheumatologists as well. But the reason I started off with this is you should have a broad mind when you approach uh, a patient with joint pains. You should think of all causes, not just rheumatological. 
and this patient had osteoporosis. Uh, see, when a patient has a hip fracture or a vertebral fracture, they usually get tested for osteoporosis, like a bone density scan maybe, and they are treated for it. But unfortunately, many patients with Coley's fractures are missed. So, if you see a patient with a Coley's fracture, please ask them to get a bone density scan and check for osteoporosis because you would be doing them a big favor because you might be preventing a hip or a vertebral fracture in the future. And of course, osteoporosis is most common in postmenopausal women. Okay, on to the next patient. This is a 60 year old lady who complains of pain in her hand joints. Now let's go start with the usual questions. How long has she had it? She's had it for about uh, a year. How painful is this? Well, she says it's quite painful uh, when the episodes happen, but when there is, uh, there are time periods when she doesn't have any pain in her hand joints. So it's constant when the episodes happen. Are there any aggravating or relieving factors? Uh, she says nothing specific, but any movement hurts when the joints are swollen and painful and painkillers help when with the pain. That's the only relieving factor. Does it disturb sleep? Yes, it does disturb sleep when uh, the episodes happen. Any other joint involvement? No. What can you not do because of this problem? She says uh, she is unable to use her hands really when she has these pains. And there is some early morning stiffness during these episodes. Again, what would be the differential diagnosis at this stage? An elderly lady with pain in her hand joints. Uh, joints in her hands. So, this could be rheumatoid, yes, and it is in both hands. So, there is a likelihood and she is in the right age group as well. This could be osteoarthritis, uh, again because of her age and there may be swelling due to osteoarthritis as well. When you ask her which joints are affected due to pain, she says all joints in the hands at various times on and off. Again, in this patient, I have not told you one important history, the fact that she is on thiazides for her hypertension. Does this change your diagnosis? It should. This lady has gout. Uh, gout usually presents with pain in the first metatorsophalangeal joint in the big toe, base of the big toe. That's the usual typical presentation. Of course, it can happen in the knee and other joints as well. But for elderly women, the upper extremity, that is the hands, are affected much earlier than the other joints. It is the opposite case in men uh, and in the other age groups as well. And women tend to get gout only postmenopausally. That's because when uh, in they are in the reproductive period, if they menstruate, they lose a lot of uric acid through that. So, only in postmenopausal women you have to consider gout. In this lady, we changed the antihypertensive and that helped her quite a lot. Now, we will go on to the next patient. Uh, he is a 40 year old man who again has pain in the joints in his hands. What questions can we ask? How long has he had it? A year maybe. And is it painful? Yes, very. When the episodes happen, he also seems to have episodes that come and go. So, when he has the episode, the pain is a lot and it's constant, but he has times when there are there is no pain. Aggravating and relieving factors, uh, he says only painkillers help and he has not noticed any specific aggravating factor. It does disturb his sleep when the episodes happen. Uh, any other joint involvement, he says he gets occasional back pain. What can you not do because of this problem? He says he is unable to go to work when these episodes happen. He is not able to use his hands at all. And he does complain of early morning stiffness during the episodes for about an hour or so. When asked which joints in his hands are affected, he points to his DIPs, distal interphalangeal joints. Those are the main joints that are swollen and painful during the episodes, distal interphalangeal joints. And the swelling and pain are on and off. They are not constant. And he does not have any other medical problems. What do we think is the differential diagnosis at this stage from the history? Could it be rheumatoid arthritis? Maybe because uh, even though he is a man, he seems to have inflammatory sounding uh, joint pains. So, this could be rheumatoid arthritis. Again, as usual, I have hidden one important point in this history. His father has psoriasis. Now, does this change your diagnosis? It should. 
this patient has psoriatic arthritis basically you can get psoriatic arthritis even before the skin psoriasis manifests so uh, a patient with psoriasis comes to you with joint pains you would automatically think about psoriatic arthritis but you can think about psoriatic arthritis even if the patient does not have any skin lesions but there is a family history of psoriasis then that can predispose to a per person towards psoriatic arthritis and i told you in the history that the distal interphalangeal joints are affected the way i remember it is easily uh, to, to remember it easily p is silent in the word psoriasis so proximal interphalangeal joint is usually spared so uh, this patient has skin nail changes as well and he had psoriatic arthritis now this patient is a 30 year old woman who complain or complains of pain in the joints in her hands uh, the usual questions how long has she had it? She's had it for about three years. So it's a fairly long history. How painful is it? It's quite painful when the episodes happen. Uh, but then there are times when she doesn't have pain at all. Any aggravating and relieving factors? Uh, she says painkillers helps to relieve the pain, but no specific aggravating factor as such. It does disturb her sleep when she has these episodes. Any other joint involvement? Not really. She's okay. It's just the hands that are the problem for her. What can you not do because of the problem? She says she is, she is finding it difficult to work, especially as time goes on. And there is some early morning stiffness. And she tells that tiredness is her main problem. She feels tired and this has been progressively increasing over the last three years. At this stage, what would the di differential diagnosis be? Yes, it could be rheumatoid arthritis because it does sound like an inflammatory type of pain in her joints. Again, the important history that she has not told you. See, I'm, I, I hide one important point in the history on purpose because I want you to understand that patients do not volunteer all information. Sometimes you have to ask them outright, do you have this? So when we ask this patient, do you have dry eyes? Do you have a dry mouth? She said yes, because she did not realize it could be related to her joint pains. Uh, she has such dry eyes that she's been using artificial teardrops for quite a while. And she has to visit the dentist quite often because she had gets caries. So does this change your diagnosis? Yes, it should. This lady has Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, that could be primary or secondary. Secondary could be due to other uh, arthritic problems like rheumatoid arthritis, but there are quite a few. But basically, you have to think about Sjogren's syndrome, even with joint pains, but you have to ask for history of dry eyes and dry mouth. This patient uh, is a 30-year-old woman who has pain in the joints in her hands. When you ask her how long, she said she's had it for about a year. And again, she has episodes which are painful and she has times when there is no pain. There is no specific aggravating factor and uh, only painkillers help to relieve the pain. It does disturb her sleep when the episodes happen. She does not have any other joint involvement. And she says she is finding it difficult to work, do her usual activities because of these pains. Uh, and the uh, early morning stiffness does last for quite a while. She says sometimes the joints are not that swollen, but they are very painful. What would be uh, the differential diagnosis at this stage? Should we think about rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, you should. The point that she has not told you is that she has photosensitivity. Uh, even from a young age, she has found that sunlight causes her to become tired and unwell and caused a rash on her face and hands. So she's been avoiding the sun for quite a few years. So she has so much so that uh, she doesn't get photosensitivity problems just because she avoids it so much. Does this change your diagnosis? It should. This patient has systemic lupus erythematosus. So patients with this condition can also present to you with joint pains. Uh, but it's unlike rheumatoid arthritis, SLE causing joint pains, the swelling is not that much, but the pain is quite a lot. And they can have reversible types of uh, Jakko's arthropathy, uh, reversible types of joint involvement as well. This last patient for the session is a 30-year-old woman who complains of an ulcer at the tip of her fifth finger. Uh, she's had it for about six months. And she, she says it's quite painful. If the ulcer touches any part, then it hurts. And it's quite a dry ulcer. The, she's seen different doctors and they've tried antibiotics, which haven't helped. Uh, she does not remember having any injury. And uh, painkillers help a little, but not that much. And the ulcer seems to be constant. 
it hasn't gone away it doesn't disturb her sleep unless the ulcer happens to touch something a, a bed sheet or something then it it hurts uh, she uh, has occasional other joint involved like joint pains mild in her hands but not in the neck or back uh, she says she is not able to do a lot of things because of this ulcer because she is scared that uh, whenever if she touches anything it will hurt the point in the history that she has not told you is she has acid peptic disease quite a lot of reflux problems and the skin on her fingers feels tight and she has red spots uh, on her skin does this change your diagnosis? This patient has scleroderma. See, uh, this patient actually went through to a lot, to a lot of pay doctors and then ultimately a dermatologist realized that this could be the beginning of scleroderma and referred to a rheumatologist and she got quite a lot of powerful medications and her finger was saved. You could ask for history of Raynaud's phenomenon as well to think of scleroderma. So basically, when you see a patient with inflammatory sounding joint pains or when you see a patient with joint pains you ask for early morning stiffness uh, and if there are any fever episodes to see if this is inflammatory and if you think this is inflammatory joint pain the questions you can ask are that whether they have any skin problems whether they have any unusual hair loss is there a family history of skin or arthritis problems at a young age and you have to ask for other system involvement. Do they have shortness, respiratory for shortness of breath, gastrointestinal, renal. You should also ask for a reproductive history because it could indicate antiphospholipid syndrome if they have had multiple miscarriages. And this is something that you need to ask all patients, um, whatever they're non-rheumatological or non-rheumatological. Uh, you should ask them what medications they are on. Like I said, thiazides and gout. Not just for that, you should know what medications they are on. You always ask for allergies, that's routine. But I would specifically ask for wheezing because sometimes patients don't seem to think of inhalers as medications and don't tell you about the fact that they have wheezing or are using inhalers. So I specifically ask for wheezing or asthma episodes and any operations. And you ask them if they've been ill enough to get hospitalized at any time. And always ask for acid peptic disease because a lot of your medications can cause acidity problems and they should know about that. Uh, I hope this has been useful. Thank you.